come after your business. I can shut down your livelihood. I can penalize you. Or in Washington State or Colorado, I can even have the government oh, bring criminal being charges nice. against you. <laughs> Joe, jo, do you agree? In 2005, I made the decision that I would no longer legalize heterosexual marriages until I could do the same for all the people in my church. I did not do that in consultation with, with anybody legally or in the government. I just simply decided they had given me the right to sign this piece of paper that signs over these, uh, these uh, privileges to some people but not to others, and I decided that that was unjust and I was not going to do it anymore. I think, I don't, I don't know about bakers and businesses, but I think clergy have the right to say, I am not going to do this marriage. And if you are against, if, you, if you're not a person that supports same-sex marriage, I doubt that you're going to be asked to do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know we're going to have to get the social media. The, the producer's telling me in my ear right now that our social media is exploding with people who want to be a part of this debate. Before we go there, I'm going to go back to our audience one more time for another question. Please tell us who you are, where you're from, and ask your questions. My name is Belinda Grant, and I'm from Candle, North Carolina. And what I want to say, I think it's interesting when we look at the Twitter accounts and Facebook, uh, there seems to be feedback that as a Christian, I need to um, separate my religion from my belief. But I do not hear that on the other side. If you believe in gay marriage, I don't hear anyone saying you need to forget about your religion belief. I believe in God unapologetically. I'm sorry, I have laryngitis. But I also believe in people. I'm a social worker. I love all people. Do you hear what I'm saying? So it's not about anti this or hate monger. I believe in the word of God. I believe in the marriage between a man and a woman. It doesn't mean that I hate anyone, but I do think um, that society is biased against Christians who do believe in the word of God, and all night you hear, you need to take out your religion. My belief in God is who I am. I don't hear anyone telling those who believe in gay marriage, you need to separate or take away your so, religion. And your, and your question is? If, if, all right. All right. It, it, All right, so, it, and your see, question is? See, that's, that's the thing that I want to get back to the panel. Just what we just experienced, just because I say I believe in God, the audience is ready to tear me apart. I think that it's very unfortunate. I would like to thank WLOS for the opportunity to be here, and I would like to thank the panel, and we need to respectfully disagree with each other without booing each other when we get up. Thank you. Um, Mark, I, uh, I know that, that wasn't a specific question. Before we go to our next audience member question, please join me, sir. I have to get back to Darcel because we're blowing up the social media. So, Darcel, what do you have for us right now? Well, we actually have a lot. Um, I'm only going to give you part of it because I don't think we have enough time for all of it. Um, this, these comments are from Facebook, and this is from Kathy Road Armor. This is not about civil rights. It's about validation and social approval. It's a radical attempt at civil engineering using government muscle to strong arm the people into accommodating a lifestyle many find deeply offensive, contrary to nature, socially destructive. Um, we have another comment from Natalie Methvin. And Natalie writes, why does the Bible have to decide what the law is? What about those of us who don't believe in the Bible? It's ridiculous. If two people love one another, then that's all that matters. We also have a comment from Peter Dunbar, who wrote, true marriage equality can only be found when the government no longer has a role in who can get married and who cannot. We're getting comments on Twitter. And this one is from, I'm not even gonna say the name because I don't wanna mess around with that hashtag. <laughs> But this is from a, a, a young man who says, Homosex homosexuality is not something new. I knew I was gay since about four or five years old. Why can't this be accepted? And then we have two more, which are really sort of like questions for the panel or members of the audience. One is from At The Light Trader, 
a question to the people on the panel who are straight. When did you choose to be straight? And then one from at Jill Earn. If marriage is about children, should two people over the age of childbirth be allowed to marry? All right, so the, the question came up earlier. I think it was addressed, but let's just go back just because the, the, the uh, uh, person on social media brings it up. Is this going back to just the issue about the birth and raising of children? Is that what marriage is all about? It, it is from a public policy perspective. The debate is not about sexuality. It's not about sexual attraction. It's not about sexual behavior. The public policy interest, if we set aside all the religious beliefs, and we all have a belief, even if it is there is no God, so I think there's no moral dimension to marriage. Every person has a belief on it, and everyone expresses that belief politically. By the way, it's also important to mention, everyone's talked about the Establishment Clause. That's the whole purpose of the Religious Test Clause of the Constitution, that no one can be denied public office because of their religious beliefs. That was the understanding that when you elect a person, you elect everything about them. If they're an atheist, they're gonna vote with atheist beliefs. If they're a Baptist, they're gonna vote with Baptist beliefs that when you elect someone to represent you, their religion is part of who they are. That informs their beliefs in terms of what's good policy and what's bad policy. Now, in terms of the public policy role regarding children, though, it is a recognition of the biological reality that when you have a baby, that baby has precisely two natural parents. One is a man, one is a woman. It is designed to bind them in a relationship for the mutual support of that child. Now that applies even if you have an older couple that's past childbearing years, because while women uh, become infertile at, in a certain age range, many men are fertile up to the moment of death. And the issue is when you have a 65-year-old CEO, if you have a 65-year-old CEO, you don't want him sleeping with his 25-year-old secretary and getting her pregnant. The purpose of marriage is it establishes, it channels sexual uh, behavior in terms of procreation within the marriage and creates a, an obligation of exclusivity and monogamy for both the male and the female uh, so that not only to take care of any children in their marriage, but also not to create children outside their marriage. All right, I want to bring Ashley back. I want to bring Ashley back into this debate. We, we haven't heard from Ashley. So, do you agree? I, I feel like if that is if that is public policy, we are failing as a world. <laughs> I, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I can appreciate that. I, I grew up in a Southern Baptist home in Alabama. My parents have been married for over 40 years. I appreciate every day that my parents have worked through all the differences. They've been loyal to each other. They've been faithful. They're God-given people. I appreciate everything you just said, but I also know that we have a lot of single families. We have a lot of un, un, you know, non-traditional families out there who are raising kids who are just as successful, who, who have just as much a chance, who are just as loved, who are just as taken care of. You know, that, that, that argument is, is there, and I appreciate it, but at the same time, it is flawed. I, I, I agree with Ashley that there's all sorts of problems. It's just I think the solution is, is to try and strengthen marriage between a man and a woman. And because there are children who succeed there are children who succeed in every family unit. But adopted households, single parent households, many children succeed. But in terms of the odds of graduating high school, college, never getting a criminal conviction, never getting into drug problems, all of those by double digit percentages are higher in a household with a biological father and mother in a low conflict marriage. All, all, due, all due respect, we don't have enough studies out there of same sex families to know if that's true or not. That's right, we don't have anything. She's absolutely right, I wanna concede that. We have no long term studies on same sex married couples and that's critically important because at the Supreme Court, there were those who tried to file briefs saying the social science says this is fine. Ashley's absolutely right. It will be years, decades before we have long term and studies. And we don't have any research to certify that what she just said was true either. But is that a reason? It goes both ways. And we never will if we continue down this path.